Hey everyone, welcome back to another My Life Stories video um, where I talk about <laughs> my life experiences and stuff that happened to me in the past or the present or whatever, you know, stuff like that. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about... <laughs> uh, I'm going um, I'm gonna cry because it sucks. <laughs> I'm going to talk about how I, how I messed up uh, an awesome potential relationship I had when I first moved to a new town, um, like, back around 2010. So, yeah. <laughs> Cue the intro. Alright, guys, so let's just get right into it. Okay, so before um, I moved into this town, I actually used to live in a different town. Um, and well, I'm not gonna say the towns because that's that's gonna be weird, and you guys, could, some of you guys are or might be able to track me down. Oof! If FBI open up, <laughs> but I mean, so I moved to this new town. I was like the new kid and stuff like that. I didn't really know what was going on because you know the whole 2008 recession stuff. So my parents had to get a new job and they had to relocate and we had to relocate and it was such a big hassle but you know it was all good because I actually made a lot of good friends there in the new town I just moved in. Um, but I, at the time I, I didn't know what to think. I was like I don't know. I didn't really you know for a while now before that I wanted to get a girlfriend and stuff like that but the thing is I was such a big loser. <laughs> like to show you how to explain how much of a loser I was I so this one time I was obsessed with death note to the point where I actually cosplayed as L in the weirdest way to school uh the cringe <laughs> I could I could I could feel the cringe right now it's really bad so but that's how bad it was um I, that's how much of a loser I was and I was such an emo kid back then. It's just cringe. Like, if I if you look at me right now, it's like, you wouldn't believe it. Like, I show some of my emo uh, pictures to my friends, and they're like, no way, that's really you? Oh my god. And all that kind of stuff, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a great reaction. I love seeing when people find out that my whole emo thing. And they're like, oh my god, you're so gorgeous. And I'm like, oh, shush. I'm cringing right now. <laughs> uh, and that kind of stuff. But yeah, anyway, so I was going through my emo phase and stuff. And so we moved into this small town. Well, it was isn't really small. It's like on a crossroads between like this big highway and stuff like that. Where a lot of people go through to get to other places. But um, so... Uh, I, it was, it's surprisingly weird because the high school there was huge. Like you would, you wouldn't think it would be like a normal high school because the high school before that, uh, before, because my freshman year, I went to high school at my old town, but during my, like, was it sophomore year? Yeah. Sophomore year. I, that's when I moved to the new school and the new school was like huge. It's like two, twice as big as my old high school. And it was ridiculous it looked like a campus because it was out in the country um well it wasn't really out in the country it was like where cornfields used to be but they um like i don't know paved it down to make the school and it's freaking huge so i don't know but that's besides the point so i went to that school um you know and apparently there was this one girl who lived um a couple blocks away from me at the same neighborhood and af for a couple months, or not months, probably like after the first month or so, um, people on the school bus started teasing me and her together. Like, I think, if I recall correctly, during one of the rides to school or some, or no, one of the rides back home, to where the bus drops me off and stuff, um, some of the kids in the bus um, told me, that she had a crush on me or something like that or she liked me and i was like d in disbelief because you know at the time i didn't really have any girls that had a crush on me or anything like that so because i was a w really weird guy well i guess it helps because i actually changed my wardrobe a little bit it it, it got a little bit more colorful than it used to be I actually bought legitimate skinny pants, um, and I started getting into the whole skinny pants stuff instead of buying these, like, 
weird jeans that's not really skinny, but they're like straight and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's weird. So that's when I became super emo. <laughs> my instead of my normal emo, I become a super emo <laughs> or something like that. I'm borderline scene kid, emo kid, or stuff. I'm slowly going through that evolution where I become a scene kid or whatever. And I guess that helps because I I don't look as weird or as like edgy as as some people. I don't know. That was a trend back then. I don't know. So I guess that helped as to why she liked me because I think she she was into that kind of kind of guys and I was one of the guys that was in, in her neighborhood that looked like that because there were there weren't a lot of edgy kids like that that wore you know skinny pants and stuff in high school at least back when I went to when I was in high school um but slowly the trend kind of caught up and people started dressing like that so I don't know but so I found that she, that she liked me and surprisingly she wasn't like the super awkward or anything about it um and I actually thought she was really cute um she wasn't like any she wasn't emo or anything either but she was like really short and I I don't know why but I have a thing for short girls cuz I think they're really adorable and cute so <laughs> just so you know <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I really, I started liking her. I t started taking an interest in her. And I guess we kind of started talking after that, after um, people started, like, I guess, shipping us together. And, uh, yeah, just from there, uh, her friend, um, her best friend started, uh, you know, helping me out with getting with her and stuff like that, getting along with her and stuff. And we actually started to hang out a bit after school and stuff like that. Well, it wasn't just us. Because that would be weird and awkward because I, I was super shy around her and she was the same way with me. And I thought that was the cutest thing ever because, you know, I, I like shy girls. But it doesn't help that I'm shy as well. <laughs> so, and so we just kind of, you know, kicked it off from there. Her friends started, like, pushing us together and stuff. And the thing is, even though I knew she liked me and sh and obviously she knew I liked her, her friend even told me that if I asked her out, she would 100% guarantee that she would say yes. Even I knew she would say yes if I did ask her out. That's how much we liked each other. Because we knew that <laughs> that we liked each other. But the thing is, I was such... Because if I did ask her out, that would be the first time I've ever asked, asked a girl out before. And knowing me, I'm like the super, super shy introvert kid that w never did that before i never asked out a girl before because i always felt like i would get rejected and stuff like that so i never i couldn't for some for for the love of god i could not muster up the courage to ask her out at all no matter how hard i tried i just couldn't say would you go out with me and stuff like that and because of that i don't know stuff went down south because of my stupidity even though we got along very well and stuff like that and i knew that she would like me back but i just i don't know i just couldn't do it and that was one of my biggest regrets is that i, I knew if i said if i did it got the courage to ask her out me and her would get along perfectly we would probably still be together today that would be like what 10 years no yeah Wait, let me see. No, it would be at least seven years together because I know that's how much we liked each other. Because there's no way I would I would like dump her because she's just too nice and adorable and stuff like that. But the thing is, later, later, like the next year or something like that, after some whole bunch of drama that happened to me, I would probably get into that in another story. Um, I eventually did ask her out, but only because one of my friends um text took my phone while I was texting her and I actually asked her out for me and I was I was kind of pissed because I didn't want to do that because I was still in love with somebody my ex-girlfriend at the time and I wasn't ready to move on but he told me that I should just move on to you know forget my ex and all that kind of stuff and I didn't want to do that because I knew that I was still head over heels over my ex because the breakup was pretty bad. I'll get into that some other time. And 
she said yes. Uh, and I was like, ah, this isn't good because, you know, I, since I'm still couldn't get over my ex, I just, it just felt wrong because it wasn't like from the heart. It wasn't legitimate. And I knew she was waiting for me to ask her out for the longest of times. And I felt horrible uh, even after I, I, I just couldn't take it back. I couldn't say like, oh, that was my friend who asked you out and stuff like that. <sighs> God, I like right now. I feel like horrible for e for even, you know, for even letting my friend grab my phone and ask her. I should I should just said you know I, I, it was it was a joke. My friend tried to do it for me or something like that. I should have just said that, but I couldn't because I I felt like if I took it back, she would have been really upset. But either way, uh, it would have been made her upset because it was all a lie. I didn't really want to go out with her at the time because I was, you know, I was still head over heels over my ex-girlfriend and stuff. So once we did uh, went out for a little, we only lasted for like a week. And even then we didn't really do anything. Like we walked home together because we had the same bus stop and stuff like that. And eventually, uh, when we were walking home together, I had to stop her and tell her that, well, I think we should break up. And she asked me why. She, You could tell she was really upset. And I, I, I felt crushed because, you know, I really did like her back in the, back in the day. And uh, I don't know. I really screwed up. Uh, I don't know. Guys, if you ever find a girl and you really like her and you can't find the courage to ask her out and you know that she will say yes... Just do it, no matter what. Just do it, because you will regret it like I do. I regret not asking her out, because I knew I could have been happy, but I just was too shy, and I was such an introvert and stuff. But now, nowadays, if I do like somebody, and and I know for sure for a fact that I can ask them out, and I will, I have that courage to do so because of the experience I went through. So take it from me. If you like somebody and they like you back, make go for it and be happy. Don't don't like let your introvertness or your shyness stop you from doing it. So, yeah, that's a life lesson I've learned and hope you guys um, take this as a life lesson as well. And, you know, apply it whenever it comes up or whatever. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this um, little story thing of my life or whatever. And uh, see you in the next video. Peace, guys. <laughs>